Okay, so my name is Jake Freeman and this is my function generator and oscilloscope. Here's the function generator. You see it creates all these different types of uh, waveforms. You change the frequency and amplitude independently on each one. Um, and you can also do them individually and they'll all show up on the graph individually or you can hit this button, add signals when selected and get them added together. So you can get a sine wave with uniform noise or a triangle wave with Gaussian noise. And when you use the DC signal, signal, it, uh, it's like a DC offset. So let me go ahead and demonstrate. So there's a sine wave. Change the amplitude a little bit. Change the frequency. Here is a square wave. And you can have them both uh, plot on the graph individually or you can add them together like so which gives you all sorts of weird stuff and the same thing you just keep adding them together um, or you can have them separate so like here's the Gaussian you know this is every waveform all put together let me take these off so here's a DC signal just a voltage this is just the uniform noise Gaussian noise you can change the amplitude so let's say I wanted to have a square wave with Gaussian noise. I would hit these and now they're added together. And you can change the amplitude of either of them independently. Which is pretty cool. Oh, I'm changing the wrong one. Which is pretty cool. Um, so yeah. So there's a sine wave. So um, Oh yeah, this graph, you can also change the volts per division here, and the milliseconds per division, which is nice. Uh, turn this off, turn it on, it does the same, well, yeah, there we go. Um, triggered waveform, there's the triggered sine wave, there's a square wave, there's a triangle wave, there's a sawtooth, you see it changes the amplitude. And it still triggers. Um, it doesn't trigger very well once you start adding the waveforms together because triggers can't follow such crazy waveforms. It does its best, but it just it can't handle it. Um, so there's that. Then there's a spectrum analyzer, which does see there's my frequency and my amplitude here. Um, you can also change the volts per division here. The milliseconds per division doesn't do anything because this is based. Uh, this is amplitude versus frequency, not amplitude versus time. So that doesn't do anything. But So there's my amplitude. I can sweep the frequency. Let me put some noise on this signal and take the volts per division down so you can see it better. Here I have a high pass filter. So I turn this on and crank this up. It cuts all the lows below 1000 hertz. Um, and you can change what frequency it's cutting off at. So that's the, the high pass filter. You can turn it off. Yeah, let me turn it. See this on and at a thousand or almost, and then off and on. Um, you can also write data to a file. So this blinks, showing you that it's constantly saving data. Um, it does actually work. This isn't just like a hit this button, this light blinks thing. Um, and that's that. So here is. Um, whoa! Let me turn this noise down and this down a little bit there we go kind of a so what we have here is you see the uh, let me just turn this noise off so now we have the min uh, max peak to peak just the mean value which in a sine wave should be zero um, so if you check the DC offset it should be pretty much close to what this is set at which is it is which is cool um, and the RMS value should be like if I said this at 10 it should be 7.07 .07, which it close enough it is reading giving RMS voltage so this is at 1.707 .07. close yeah so does that um, of course it does do it for all the other gives you the you know the readings for all different forms, waveforms, and um, yeah, I'm pretty sure that's pretty, pretty straightforward. Does a lot of cool stuff. Um, yeah, it's a fun project, and that is it.